Hi everyone. Hi everyone, this is Steven. I'm Angela. And this is the Steve Angela Show. Welcome back you guys. We are excited to be back because as you guys know from the last show that Steven was in Italy mm -hmm. and so we were just getting And back. I was jet lagged. Yes, very jet lagged. We were getting back in the mix of things and everything and things are back to normal mm -hmm. schedule wise and everything. So we're back and on today's show on our vlog today, we're going to talk about spirituality because I noticed uh, two videos ago when I did the one by myself when Stephen was in Italy, I did speak about spirituality and a lot of the folks out there said they're interested in knowing about my whole spiritual journey from when I was a little girl up until now, which I am going to share it because I think that it's important and uh, because there's so many of you that are interested. And I'm just now trying to figure out what day I'm going to put it on. Whether I'm going to put it on Monday, my Rolling Empire Day, or Friday, which is Fashionable Friday, or maybe just on Saturday, on Steve Angela Day. So I'm still trying to figure that out. Maybe I'll just put it on Saturday and have one in the morning and then have the Steve Angela show at night. So bear with me with that one. Stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe because I'm going to open up and share all of that. So... Because we're talking about spirituality, we figured we would talk about that subject. And we want to get everybody involved with this. We want to know what your opinion is, what you guys have experienced. And one of my biggest things about spirituality is, do you think that it's important to be with someone who believes in the same things as you do? Not per se has to have the same encounters and all that, but whether it's the same religion or somewhat open, to believing in something or do you believe that an atheist can be with someone who's spiritual uh, it might be a little easier if you are with someone who believes in the same thing or is open to it you know what I'm saying baby? Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying baby absolutely okay so Steven's gonna break it down because we were talking about this earlier how important is it to be with someone who is as spiritual or at least open to spirituality or believes and what you believe in, whether it's spiritual or whether it's religious. I mean, mm -hmm. We're not being religious here, but do you want to break it down? No, spirituality is, I think, is very important in the life of everyone. I mean, understanding that we are finished as a matter and there should be something like uh, over there in the afterlife. There is something that a human being since the ancestors and since the dawn of man has always looked for something like that is over life because we, are, we, we terminate. And we are so like weak, we are so like finished, we are so like imperfect that of course everyone is looking for something else. So all the answers and the, the, the primal answers and fears in the heart of every man. Being spiritual in a relationship of course can help. I'm not saying that being not spiritually can... Um, Break the relationship. Can like not help in a relationship because anything is like almost possible in life. Even people from different religions can date, keep their religion in the relationship and like have a beautiful relationship and between a couple. But I'm saying that as a majority, as a percentage, when a, a couple has some sort of spirituality, some sort of a, like soul agreement about morality, which most of the times collides with spirituality, they're almost the same they have like less problems in the relationship because they they know where not to waste too much energy in like problems and like silly things in life that probably in this superficial society in this like technological so society sometimes it's just uh, it becomes a big issue in a relationship being spiritual helps all that helps like going over and like really care just about like like the real and important things in life all right, the reason why I brought this question up is because before I met Steven, a couple years back, I actually dated an individual who was atheist, and we fought. We fought because he had a way of believing and thinking a certain way, very scientific, and all the encounters and spiritual things that happened to me, he had a scientific reason why it happened. And so we would battle back and forth about it. And I remember during that time, I was questioning if I could be with this person or not if they were atheists. 
And it's funny because I remember talking to my neighbor across the street and they've been together for over 50 years and he's atheist and she's Jewish. So I was trying to get some advice and find out. And so I just, I'm always a person of statistics and you know, of course, like Stephen said, anything works. You know, you can make anything possible. Anything is possible. It's just a matter of percentage. Sometimes it works more, sometimes it works less, of course. If you have a couple of people that are on the same page spiritually, they're going to fight less. And probably if there is a fight in a relationship, they're going to argue on how to solve the problem instead of being always one and one in the same position and all about, no, you cannot change me, you cannot change me here, I'm going to say like this, I'm going to say like this there. So being spiritual means that there are some things in life that are more important than what we stress about every day. And there are some questions that are still unanswered and we know that we are so weak that no matter how strong you are, how rich you are, how powerful you are, it takes, for example, one of these things, one little microscopic bacteria to put you down on a toilet for two days in a row. So it doesn't matter how strong you are, you're not bulletproof either. So there are a lot of things where you go down to reduce as some, some just mere matter. So that's why we're spiritual because there is something you cannot kill, which is the soul. There is something you cannot kill, which is an idea, an idea of spirituality, an idea of morality. Otherwise, we are not different than a piece of stone. We're not different than a piece of wood. We're not different than a conglomerate of chemistry. We think, we love, uh, we hate. It's just a chemical process. There is nothing beyond that, and we cannot believe that. That's the thing. So for the folks out there, my love, because a lot of people like to know where you're from and all these all these little facts and you know the questions that they have. So as a religion or spirituality, how, what what is your religion? How was spirituality or uh, basically where does it all stem from for, for you? No, I was raised as a Christian Catholic, so I was raised as a Catholic. Now I'm just Christian. I started almost every religion, Buddhism, Islam. Uh, even Hinduism, a lot of religion, and I found the Christianity to be like the most, uh, probably along with Buddhism, like the most precise and detailed religion you can believe. But it doesn't matter if you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you cannot deny he's one probably the best philosopher that this planet ever met. And that's what I believe. I believe in the Christian philosophy. It means peace, it means like good thinking, good energy towards everything, and helping people. I'm all about a lot about helping people and helping the planet. That's what I'm all about. Because I think it doesn't matter if it's the creation of God, again, it doesn't matter. It's a beautiful creation. It doesn't matter who created it. Like these little things called animals, these are beautiful creations that we got to preserve, we got to protect, not destroy or taking advantage. It's the same thing. Yeah. That's what I believe. Daddy's talking about you. Yes, and for those of you guys, you know that I was... It doesn't matter what you believe in. I mean, there is a beautiful thing that almost every religion has 90% of the things in common. It means that almost every religion is a good thing. Fundamentalism is another thing we're going to talk about probably in another video. That's another branch of being religious. That being, it becomes stopping being religious. It becomes being fanatic, which is a different thing. Fanatism is a never a good thing. No matter what you're pursuing, even being fanatic in sport, it's not a good thing. You're gonna injure yourself. Being fanatic with food, you're gonna injure yourself. The right thing is in the middle. It's always, this is a maximum that is always real in life, always right. So even being too spiritual or too religious, it's, it's, religious, it's, it's a bad happens. thing because you alienate yourself. You close your, eye, your eyes on the world and you only see everything like through a different lens that is not real. I mean like tunnel vision. Exactly. Just focused on Like thing. horses. Tunnel vision, yeah. With the tunnel vision with horses. With blinders on. Yeah. And again, we're not preaching here anything like that. As Steph said, it's just that, you know, whether you're religious or not, it's just a question of, we're just opening it up, just to open and just talk with everyone out there, just to communicate and to connect just about relationships and being with someone who's religious to not religious, what works, what doesn't work, uh, to morals, to just, you know, it's all about just being in this world, doing good, giving back, 
and making it a better place. And it's great to be with someone who's on the same mission as you and where you guys don't have to butt heads and you have an understanding and you're looking at the vision, the bigger picture. You guys are both seeing the same picture as opposed to one person seeing one way and the other person seeing it the other way. So that's just something we're talking about. And I just brought it up because as I stated, I am going to start these vlogs of my spirituality, just my journey from when I was a young girl to all the way now, I'm 43, and just sharing everything of me dying five times, coming back, different times when I was little up until the last time I had passed and crossed over. I was six year, It was six years ago, and what I saw, what I experienced is not what scared me. It's the fact that I knew, again, I had a premonition one month before it happened. So that was another thing that me and Steven were talking about. If he's ever had any type of supernatural or spiritual encounters, and as you can hear, he's... No, the like, answer is no. <laughs> I never had the pleasure to have like any supernatural encounter or like one of those things you cannot explain. Not yet, not yet. Maybe in the future. So that's all. But we just want you guys to continue subscribing. Please send comments. We're waiting for comments. Oh, one of the comments was, or one of the questions was, uh, how do you stay fit? They want to know how you stay fit. What's your secret? Pro Basically, guys, folks, she has no secrets. She has a super... Uh, fast metabolism due to her injury so there is no secret she doesn't use anything she that she eats a lot actually she eats even like f fat mm. food I mean yeah. food there is not like a super dietetic or well, something I like eat that now before I didn't eat I used to starve myself because I didn't want to gain weight so now I have to eat every three to four hours and there is a way to speed your metabolism up it's by eating it's by grazing eating small little meals throughout the day and yeah, so, that's one of the yeah one of the ways. that's one of the secret if you really want to lose weight you from a, from a nutritionism point of view. Yes, the more you eat, actually, it's a paradox. The more you eat, the more you lose weight. The key is the quantity and the quality of exactly. food. You don't have to eat like you don't have to eat like super big meals, but you have to eat like small meals throughout the days, so even seven eight meals throughout the day only healthy meals it means lots of veggies if you can lots of fruit and like the healthiest meats that you can provide it means fish. fish if you like fish eat eat a lot of fish because it's the cleanest protein and a lot of white meat chicken turkey whatever of course avoid the red meat because it's carcinogen because it's not good for your body at all so if Very you, if you follow these things, but, yeah. yes, you're going to lose a lot of weight. If you add a little bit of exercise, you're going to speed up everything even more. So that's something you can do. Yeah, absolutely. I have no secret. I mean, what was... But we, she has we, no secret. We went to sleep at what, 12 last night? And I yeah. asked Umo to go in the kitchen and what did he warm up? Pasta. And he fed me pasta. I ate pasta right before I was going to sleep. Because my metabolism I love so pasta, I'm Italian, so I'm a pasta man. I would eat pasta three times a day, like no brainer, but I can't. I barely eat pasta because I gotta stay fit all the time. So that's, that's what I personally eat, and it works. And I, of course I work out too, but it matters 60% is just nutrition. Mm -hmm. Even if you're, if you're a little bit over, overweight and you don't work out at all, 60% is just nutrition. You can lose a lot of weight just with the things you eat. And that's it. Very true. So on that note, I'm hungry. I'm going to have my baby warm me some food up. I'm going to go eat. And I want to say thank you to all of you guys for following us, for subscribing. We're on Instagram and Facebook, so follow us there. And please send comments. And thank you for all the support. And have a wonderful weekend. And we will see you guys next weekend, okay? Bye. Bye-bye.